Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon. Depending on which part of the world you live in, you might be dealing with the same isolation measures as I am. The government is recommending we stay inside as much as possible here in Romania to avoid contact with other people. So that gives me more time to work on projects, learn new stuff and of course discover and order stuff from the internet. I'm gonna start with this notebook which has this uh, retro looking leather cover. I think it's quite neat looking and I'm not sure if this is real leather or not. The description just said leather. I always keep a notebook around the workbench, it can be useful for uh, drafting a quick schematic, some uh, dimensions or just for writing down some measurements. A cool feature of this notebook is the binder style clips you have inside which allow you to insert or remove paper sheets from this. And what's even nicer is that you can find this type of paper with different grid styles and they're very affordable to order. For example, I've ordered some of this dotted style grid and I've also ordered some square shaped grid type paper and I'm gonna put these inside the notebook. There are so many types of grids and prints for this size of uh, paper that I'm sure you'll find a combination that suits your needs. There are even different sizes of notebooks available, so pick your uh, favorite one. I think every engineer should keep a notebook like this uh, close to the workbench and it doesn't really matter which type of notebook you use but this one just adds a bit of style with this leather cover. As always you'll find links to these products in the description below the video. And you know what else adds style? A professionally manufactured PCB for your project. JLC PCB has a great offer for $2 you get a set of 5 PCBs, you can choose your own solder mask color with no extra cost, they even offer affordable laser cut stencils and the turnaround time is just 24 hours. Next I have an interesting module slash adapter, this is an M.2 to USB adapter and it doesn't contain anything active, it's almost entirely passive uh, except for some power stuff because the M.2 interface also known as NGFF which stands for next generation form factor exposes interfaces for PCI Express, SATA and USB all through the same form factor and this particular adapter just connects the USB interface from an M.2 module to the USB port. The circuitry we see on this module is uh, just for power, probably stepping down the 5 volts from the USB port. We also have a SIM card slot on this module and that is because it's targeted towards connecting M.2 communication modems via USB and so provides the required SIM card which is necessary if you want to get the modem connected to a network. I needed this module because I own a Lenovo X1 Carbon laptop and as most modern laptops they have a BIOS whitelist for which modems they accept on the motherboard. Lenovo's genuine modem is something like 150 euros on eBay which I found too expensive but you can find the exact same hardware branded Dell for less than $30. So people have figured out how to reprogram those uh, modems with the hardware ID and settings a Lenovo motherboard would expect. But you need one of these external adapters to do the procedure over USB because having the modem installed inside the laptop would prevent the system from booting because of that BIOS whitelist. So yeah, I can confirm the method works and I now have a 4G modem installed and working inside my laptop. My next item is an oven thermometer. The old one is quite scorched so I thought I'd replace it with a new one. And this has a larger dial than the old one which uh, should improve visibility. I don't know if you can use these for anything else, I think they have some pretty poor accuracy, they're just good enough for a kitchen oven. If you happen to do some cooking, you might want to get yourself one of these because it will help a lot. Next I have a couple of these uh, IR based uh, wave triggered switches. I think these are generally designed to be used for LED lighting applications but the specs are up to 24 volts input and up to 5 amps switching current so you could use something like this to turn on or off other stuff as well. 
I had one of these uh, modules previously and I just used it to add a strip of LEDs to a kitchen area and it's quite nice you just uh, uh, wave your hand in front of the sensor and the light comes on which is especially useful in the kitchen where your hands might not be clean and you need to turn the light on without smearing something on the switch. Having a couple of these uh, in my toolbox uh, will prove handy. How do you transfer something like gel flux from one syringe to another? Well, you could improvise and use something like a piece of uh, tubing between these two syringes. You could uh, 3D print something to go in there or you could buy these uh, special lure lock adapters because flux generally comes in these uh, lure lock type syringes and, or even if you buy these uh, yourself uh, it's best to get them with uh, this type of uh, fitting which is called lure lock. I gave these adapters a quick bath in isopropyl alcohol for disinfection. They look like they're brand new though and I'll only be using them for transferring flux so it should be safe enough. An advantage to transferring flux into a syringe through the uh, bottom part of the syringe is that you get a cavity filled with the liquid with no air pockets and without getting the rest of the uh, syringe dirty. So I'm happy I got a set of these, they, they should uh, come in handy and as usual a link will be provided in the description below the video. Since we're spending a lot of time inside our homes I discovered some board games I had and I noticed I needed some new sets of dice. I ordered these uh, black ones because I thought they might look cool but I was kind of expecting a smaller size. These are 12 mm dices and they come in a set of 10 pieces. They're something like $2 shipped which is quite affordable and they should last you a lifetime as long as you don't lose them as I did with the previous ones. I wanted to give these uh, stickers a try. They are meant to be used on a car side mirrors and according to their description they should improve visibility in situations like rain or fog by repelling water. This can be obtained with some hydrophobic liquid coatings as well which I've tried and they work to some extent but I wanted to see if these plastic films do better. If they're not any better than just a hydrophobic coating then well it's not worth installing them and I've just wasted a dollar and fifty cents. But that was worth a try especially since they uh, include a squeegee and probably some cleaning wipes inside this uh, Back. Next I have an HDMI cable which is 3 meters long and has the connectors angled in a way that would work well with the position of the camera on my microscope. If you haven't seen the microscope review video it's video 282 and I'll link it on screen right now. The thing is the original camera that came with the microscope and for which I ordered this uh, cable had the HDMI port uh, facing up and so I got this specific orientation to uh, route the uh, HDMI cable towards the back of the microscope and in a position that would not interfere with me working with the microscope. But the uh, newer camera that I have has the HDMI port on the back and so uh, this wire would probably go like this. It will go down so I'm not sure. It could work but uh, I'll have to see when I install it on the uh, microscope head. Although it's uh, quite thick, uh, I suspect it needs to be this thick to have all the uh, required insulation for going up to 3 meters. This wire feels like it's good quality, it feels like it's a rather soft material and it still maintains its uh, flexibility. It's not going to be as flexible as a thinner cable but still it's, uh, it's good enough. Next, as an upgrade for my 3D printer, I got one of these dual gear metal extruders which should be better than the standard extruder that I have on my printer. Uh, the standard one has accumulated some wear and I don't trust it anymore. I'm also having some problems with the uh, clamps on the Bowden tube but I'm going to install this new extruder and uh, I will be replacing the quick connectors as well as the Bowden tube to try and improve extrusion uh, precision on my 3D printer. I'll probably do a separate video on that subject with maybe a before and after test of extrusion. Next I have a W600 Pico module and if you haven't heard of this before it's based on the W600 processor which is basically an ARM Cortex-M3 with Wi-Fi and one megabit of flash memory. I was particularly interested in this module because they claim it's compatible with MicroPython so I thought I'd give it a try because 
This year I want to learn more about Python and in particular MicroPython or CircuitPython. I currently know very little about MicroPython and how it is different from CircuitPython which I know Adafruit is uh, developing a lot on but I'm sure I will find plenty of info online once I start digging. The big question with these modules is always how good is the development platform or the support. So far I've noticed there is this uh, wiki page from Wemos which might provide valuable info but if that's the only support page Things are not looking good for this little module when you compare it to the uh, modules sold by Adafruit. But we'll uh, see how that goes. I'll do a separate video on the subject of, uh, on the subject of MicroPython and uh, CircuitPython. And the last item in today's video is this miniature mobile phone. I've always liked these and when I saw them in various videos and pictures I finally ordered one to check it out. It mimics the looks of the veteran Nokia 3310. By the way, did you own a Nokia 3310? Let me know in the comments. I owned one and it was rock solid. Inside the package we get a very short and crappy micro USB cable and the uh, small phone. Uh, this uses the uh, 0.66 inch OLED modules and believe it or not this is a dual SIM and I think I, it can actually be practical in some situations to have one of these like if you want to go running outside and you don't want to carry a full size phone but you still want to be reachable and I'm sure these are used by people locked up in prisons because it's much easier to hide something like this uh, because it's so small and please refrain yourself from commenting about the possible spots where this might be hidden. The lithium battery inside has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, a capacity of 380 milliamp hours. And beneath these batteries we find the two SIM slots and one of them can double as an SD card slot though I'm not sure what you could use the SD card for in this phone, there's no camera. Looks like they put some captain tape over the battery terminals uh, during shipping. Um, I'm thinking this phone might have an issue with uh, a standby power usage. It might drain the battery if it's left connected. So I'll have to measure that before leaving the battery inserted in the phone. That's quite an interesting startup tone. Wow, it's, it feels so, so small. This screen feels so small and it's so difficult to read a long text on this. So I'm going to have to play with this a little bit more to discover how to use it. But so far it looks very interesting. So I'm very happy with this uh, purchase. Uh, it could work like a backup phone or in those scenarios where you need to pack as light as possible. That was all for today. As usual, you can find links to all of these items in the description below the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.